we're actually going to get a rare glimpse of our collective past in today's show. So let's begin by asking Ms. Chia why now and what kind of findings she has for us. Ms. Chia? This year, the Nielsen Company celebrates its 40th year of the Media Index in Singapore. As you know, Nielsen is the leader in media and market research. We have been gathering consumer data for four decades now, so there's a lot of insight we can share about the way people lived, worked and played in the past. Well, I hope the younger audiences out there take heed, and there are definitely a lot more young people out there now, isn't it? Well, let's just say the majority of the population are hardly youths. Right now, half our adult population is above 40, and the other half is between 15 to 40. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes, we are certainly getting older as a nation. Up next, a quick recap of this morning's headlines. Don't go away. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> so, do you understand what I'm looking for? Mr. Sek, it's quite rare that someone wants a charting of media trends since 1968. Is that going to be a problem? Not at all. It just so happens we've been around since 1968 ourselves. So you can rest assured that data comes first hand to you from our very reliable archive of information. Oh, tell me more about your company. Nielsen Company is really the pioneer in media and consumer research in Singapore. We started the Media Index in 1968 to serve as the print currency by tracking newspaper and magazine readership. Later, when other media like TV, radio and cinema grew in prominence, we started covering them as well. No other company at that time was doing it. Good foresight! foresight and a strong culture for service. We are already gearing up to track IPTV, mobile advertising and mobile broadband. I'm afraid I'm not too familiar with those technologies. Maybe you could start with something that's closer to my business. Certainly. You mentioned newspapers? I own a few in Indonesia. <laughs> well, in Singapore, newspaper daily readership has grown since the 70s it peaked in the 90s but settled down in the new millennium. What about the competition? Depends on how you define competition. If you mean English language papers, there have been a few contenders over the years, but most did not last very long. You mean Straits Times is the only English language daily left? No. The success of the Straits Times spawned the Business Times in 1976. And in 1988, SPH launched an afternoon tabloid called The New Paper. Uh, SPH? Singapore Press Holdings. Formed in 1984 through a merger between Times Publishing Berhad, The Straits Times Press Group and SNPL. They publish all the local dailies in Singapore except Mediacorp's today. Mediacorp? Yes. With media liberalisation in the millennium, the English daily market really came to life. Free papers started to appear in the early days of competition. It is very important to my business that I keep up to date on the latest trends in society's moods, values and attitudes. What do you think is a good barometer of these things? Well, if you ask me, personally I get all that by just reading women's magazines. What? Enlighten me, please. Well, if you've been reading some of my favourite magazines for a number of years, you should be able to get a good sense of how readers' tastes, lifestyles and attitudes are changing over time. So what magazines do you publish, Mr. Sek? Uh, uh, architectural titles mostly, uh, like Hong Kong Penthouse, uh, Thai Penthouse. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't interest you. <laughs> well, my husband is an architect. Maybe he subscribes. Sure, I'm sure. <laughs> We have a little joint magazine kitty fund, but usually for family titles. These are all our favourites. Interesting, interesting. We are also keen readers of the lifestyle titles, like Lifestyle and Reader's Digest. No way. Uh, Is there any other offices? Um, yes, upstairs. Let's go. Is everything okay? Thank you, Dolores. I've got another urgent meeting. I will be back.